So the title is at HKLC 1000, Toward the Future of Structural Biology. You may notice that I wrote toward the future of structural biology, not toward the future of uh, protein crystallography. Because quite often we are talking about high throughput, uh, and I do not want to talk about high throughput. I would like to talk about high output, and I would like to talk about high output in the sense of biological impact. We have 70,000 structures in PDB. Structure genomics produce enormous number of structures, and the structure by itself is not important anymore. Even very important structure uh, has to show uh, that there is a biological impact or biomedical, I should rather say biomedical impact on uh, our daily life. Uh, on the first two slides, and uh, every attendee may get uh, this presentation later, on the first two slides I am showing some uh, basic uh, literature to what I am going to to say, and the first is the older paper processing of the X-ray diffraction data collected in oscillation mode, and as you see, it has quite a substantial number of citations, and this shows the impact which uh, one program has on the protein crystallography. Again, on the protein crystallography, not on the structure biology. Uh, volume uh, international tables for crystallography, volume a, a, F, is little older uh, paper, and there will be new edition of volume F. And here you have some newer papers, and I strongly recommend to read these papers. Now. What is HKLC 1000? HKLC 1000 is a part of the database control pipeline, which starts from the project and in the wet lab and ends with a structure. Beyond of that is interpretation of the structure and biomedical impact. And the pipeline or database works roughly like uh, nervous system that it sends the information where are we uh, what is our progress and most importantly where we feel the pain yes if this progress is smooth we almost do not need the database we do not need any information we have the smooth uh, progress from project to, from the idea to the structure. But if there is somewhere bottleneck, if we cannot uh, uh, get through some uh, uh, step, we need to feel a pain to react. Now, HKS 3000 is sometimes called six mouse click program. Yes, it starts from here, and HKL2000 is a part of that. And the program HKL3000 uses various programs to get to the structure. So you see, and I will do that later, it's important to acknowledge the authors of all these programs. And you do not need to use all of them, but what is Necessary is Shellex uh, uh, family could and CCP4. Without that, HKLC 1000 does not work. Everything else is optional, and it can be used, and sometimes for some projects, it can be very, very useful. Now, I will show some data and the question, and what is the source of this data? Some data were collected in my lab but there is phenomenal resource for all programs
program developers and all people who would like to have an access to projects with various difficulties. And this is the Center of Structured Genomics of Infectious Disease. It has over 100, uh, no, over 200, uh, 230, I didn't count recently, sets of diffraction images. And you can do everything from processing to the structure solution, and you have various difficulties of the project and various, uh, various projects. For instance, you have here target IDP 00044, and as you see, you have four uh, different deposits. One is the native structure, or uh, this native structure already has a, uh, has a, a ligand, and you have various studies, so you can train various technique using these images. And we will solve here ITP 00698, uh, which is, uh, and we will solve that by SAT, just to il illustrate you how HKL 3000 works. Angela mentioned about the data collection, and I will not show the data collection, but I would like to address the strategy. First, strategy, and especially multi-crystal strategy, if you have crystal decay, you really have to use uh, more than one crystal. It's, it may be beneficial. So strategy, historically, was designed to minimize the use of the synchrotron type. It used to be that people were getting 24 hours of synchrotron time, and they, and they, to collect the single data set, it took roughly around 12 hours. So people really wanted to minimize uh, the synchrotron time, and for that reason, here this, in this window, you have strategy in the historical sense. So you have you you have the illustration where you should start to the data collection to minimize the amount of time to minimize the oscillation uh, range, range in the sense of the data set, to get complete data set, or maybe not complete, but almost complete data set. So as you see here, it, if you will start, if you will set omega at the around 90, you will need to collect around 100 uh, frames for that exams with certain at certain distance uh, and certain uh, uh, frame widths. Yes, with frame is 100 uh, uh, one degree. And here on the lower window, you have a simulation. And you may simulate various runs if you are using more than one crystal. Now, what is really critical these days is radiation damage. So on the right window, when, you, when we estimate the beam flux, you see two curves. Blue one is the I over sigma versus resolution for first frame, and this is calculated from first two frames. And the red one is the I over sigma versus resolution at the frame 175. And 
you, you see, why we have to, what is our goal now for uh, uh, strategy? To get the maximum from the single crystal or from the few crystals. We have to realize one thing, that 10 years ago or 15 years ago, synchrotron, synchrotron time was extremely valued. These days, crystals are more valuable, and if you compare, I am giving usually this example, on the right side you have uh, star of Africa diamonds, on the left side you have protein crystals, but by volume or by weight, protein crystals are much more expensive than any diamond in the world. Now, there are, in strategy, you have a lot of possibilities. And this is the one of the possibility when you can orient crystal in basically uh, any position having, in this example, uh, spindle A star along spindle axis and C star vertical, and in that case, you have here, or here, 1, 5, minus 1, and on the next slide, here, you have minus 5, minus 1, 5, minus 1. Now, you have to realize one thing, that not always you can orient crystal in any position you want. There are some experimental limitations. Yes, your first of all, your goniostat may not allow you to do anything you want. Second, you may have uh, another obstacle like uh, uh, freezing. So you see that here and uh, here the uh, uh, you have the information whether certain position is available for what you would like to do. Now with data collection and in strategy, you have to think what is the goal of your experiment. And it may be molecular replacement, it may be new structure by SAT or MAT, and you have to think SAT versus MAT, and take into account that it's usually much simpler to solve structure by SAT than by MAT. Or you may do ligand screening or identify the ligand, and each of these experiments requires little different strategy. And if you will read the papers which I put in the beginning, all these strategies are described in detail. What to do to apply one or the second strategy. Now, what you have to remember, what you have to do, remember, that there is no simple recipe. What to do? Yes, and for that reason, protein crystallography is still difficult. If we would have simple recipe, what to do, we could run everything in automatic mode. I mean, absolutely everything in automatic mode, and people are trying to run uh, everything in automatic mode, and I have to admit that I do not like automatic mode. I like semi-automatic mode. Take into account that there is around 15,000 crystallographers in the world. We have 7,000 deposits. So basically, on average, every crystallographer solves one structure every second year. Do we need to do automatically what we can do in 15 minutes or less, 
and I will show you the structure solution in a few minutes, and few structure solution. Now, with data collection, there are two things uh, to consider. First, what is possible? Yes, and we can do many things. But what is possible is not important. But we should think what is beneficial for a particular type of experiment. And I'm giving a few examples. White sectors versus narrow sectors. Uh, people quite often recently started to use very narrow sectors, like 0.01 degree, because they are saying that pixel array detectors, they do not have readout error, so we can use very, very narrow sectors. Are you really benefit from that? I didn't see the data that you can benefit from extremely narrow sectors because some detectors have artifacts, and really artifacts dominate the image. The next example is inverse beam experiment. Should we use inverse beam experiments? Not necessary, because if we are using program for processing, which applies the correction for radiation decay, and if we are using inverse beam experiment, we are fully scaling. So there is Experimentally, we should use inverse beam experiment, but not necessarily. The use of inverse beam experiment leads to the better uh, data. And I would like to say that we do not use inverse beam experiment. We just collect data and apply correction for radiation decay. The next is crystal orientation. Should we orient the crystal to have uh, anomalous pairs on the screen, on the same diffraction image? In principle, yes. And if everything works on ideal way, yes. But if your detector response is not uniform, uh, it, you may apply more harm than gain. You will have more harm than gain from crystal orientation. Obviously, crystal orientation is very, very important uh, in the case when you have long unit cell and you have to align long unit cell uh, along the spindle axis to get uh, to really remove overlaps. Now, usually, if you are looking for new structure and you are using anomalous signal, you have to have anomalous signal in your data. If you do not have anomalous signal, you do not solve this structure. And this is comparison of signal from selenomet and signal from sulfurs. And you see that selenomet is usually quite easy experiment in comparison with sulfur. And with sulfur, we really have to have very good experimental system, stable beam, and good software to solve the structure. In case of telenomet, almost everything works for average data. And I, I think that now I will uh, uh, switch to uh, the real data. Uh, and we will try to process 
uh, one data set. I am starting HKL 3000, and as with HKL 2000, you have uh, sites which describe your list of sites which describe your, your experimental system, and I am using uh, the example of 00698, IDP 00698, which was collected in 2008, in March 2008, on 19 uh, SBC on sector 19 uh, on the bending magnet beam line. Why we have date? Because the detector which was used in that time required calibration. And calibration, we repeated calibration, and for that reason, we, we put the uh, information about the, uh, about the um, calibration date. So you have here the tree where are the data, and I will create directory uh, webinar, and we will move the everything what we are getting from the processing to webinar. I am doing a low data set, and here I have data set, and the data sets are collected. I am not, I am doing this webinar on the computer, which is not uh, hooked up to the data collection, and for that reason, you do not have the access to the top collect. But before we will do anything, we should set up the project. Yes, as I said before, project is something which is very important. So we will edit the project, and we will say that this is, you can take the sequence, the information about the project from or from three structured genomic centers in which I am a member of, from Swiss Prot, NCBI, PDB, or from the file. So we are doing that from CSG ID, and this is 00698 as you saw before, and you click download, and you are getting the sequence from the database. And what you will are saying that, okay, we will use selenomet. And you see, I judge that project as an easy project because I have chosen something which can be done relatively fast here in a few minutes. So obviously something which can be done in a few minutes is an easy project. I am clicking down. And what you have here, you have the information that you have 100, 199 residues and two selenium atoms. What does it mean? That we have one selenium for 100 residues. And many people are saying that the, that this indicates difficult project. And as you later will see, the solvent content is not very high. And we, and for obvious reasons, we do not have non-crystallographic symmetry. <coughs> so in some sense, everything, you may say that everything works against of us. But in fact, as I said, it's an easy project. This is the diffraction image, and you see the, the, the big spaces between between uh, CCD chips, and this is the reason for that is that this was SBC detector, and we process data, raw data. And 
calibration is applied on the fly. So we are doing peak search like before and index. Yes, yeah, so we index. I always uh, urge people to first make, before they will go to the higher symmetry, to apply a few uh, refinement cycles in the P1. And you will see here on this exam that this was quite beneficial. Yes? That look that the chi squares dropped dramatically, not dramatically, but quite uh, dropped substantially. But if you will look here, the distance is 144.8. And in the data, the nominal distance is 150. So you have here the indication by different color. You have the indication that the, there is an offset in the distance, and system requires recalibration and distance require recalibration. And what is the most important in HKL 3000 and in HKL 2000 as well, that you are getting a lot of feedback. So if you cannot solve structure or if you cannot process data, you are getting information why you cannot process data or why you cannot solve structure. And you, you, usually you are getting for information. So now we will look at Bravo lattice again, and you see that primitive rhombohedral has the lowest distortion. So probably this is the right space group. Uh, so now we made the uh, we are refining in R3 space group, and we can look here, and you see that you have contamination from the other crystal. So the crystal is not the crystal is not ideal, uh, and very rarely we have ideal crystals now. Yes, for more difficult projects, we do not have ideal crystals, and we have to deal with non-ideal crystals. And I said before, crystals are very important, very expensive, and if we can get the structure from lower quality crystal, it may save us tremendous amount of effort and money. And here we decided to go for uh, for the structure, despite of the fact that crystal was not ideal, yes? And as you see, the crystal was not ideal. Uh, there was contamination of the, uh, at least from two other crystals, and, but that's okay, yes? That as you see uh, in a moment, we didn't have very, very serious problem with structure solution, Although, uh, uh, if we would have better crystal, everything would be simpler or easier, if at that point something can be easier. So now we are doing the integration, and we can observe chi-square, deviation of the crystal, deviation of the cell, and how mosaicity changes with uh, uh, changes, uh, I mean, an, uh, an isotropy of mosaicity. And again, you, you have here all these problems, yes? You have an isotropic mosaicity, you have uh, 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 small ice rings, uh, you have the contamination from the other domains. 
So what you have is a normal data, not ideal data, but normal data, normal thing which you uh, encounter uh, uh, during the normal experiment, or at least we encounter during the normal experiment. Yes, we we are not going for ideal crystals. We very rarely have ideal crystals. So you see that chi-square is reasonable, but it changes, and we can go directly to scale and immediately I will use correction for absorption because and correction for radiation decay. Look at the uh, uh, and what we have. We have here the completeness is more or less okay, although because of contamination, completeness in the low resolution data is not idea. Yes? So this is here is 8 angstrom, and below 8 angstrom, you, the, the completeness drops. And this is for the contamination from the other crystal. And now I will use rejection on the next uh, on the next run. And what you see you have anomalous signal, which is not as which is quite good, but not as good as on the slide which I shown. Just because you have all these problems, and again you have one selenium for 100 uh, for 100 residues. Now we are going to structure solution. And we are doing data analysis after merging. What we see that we have quite strong anomalous signal and strong anomalous signal to the edge of the detector. So this is something which is very promising. And I said before, here everything is calculated automatically. So we, you see that we can try to say, okay, maybe we have two uh, uh, molecules, but asymmetric unit, but it's impossible. So you, you see that all these automatic calculations you can uh, you can override. So this is not this is not which is black box. It can work in semi-automatic mode. And in principle, it could work in automatic mode, but you can override any uh, any values which are in the program. Again, we are not running shell scripts in uh, predefined shell scripts. The scripts are generated on the fly, and they very strongly depend on the uh, previous steps. So now we will look for substructure, and you see that immediately we are getting correlation coefficient above 40. And this is something which is very promising, especially for this type of data. And because we got that several times, the same solution several times, and correlation coefficient is above 40, program stop. Now we can run infinite number of cycles, and we can the, the same system can be used for MAT, not for SAT. But in many cases, MAT is not necessary. We, we, we could use math, but it's not necessary. We have structured before. We can look at sites, and you can go to phase page, and first we have to choose an antimer. 
So I am clicking check check hand and and you have you see that there is a very strong separation in map contrast between uh, two enantiomers, and it, it indicates that everything is great. And for that reason, we will abort at that point, and we will go to phase. Yes, and now we are repeating the fast uh, fast uh, tongue and flatten done by Shell uh, XE, and we will go to phasing, and phasing is done by MLFR. And you see that here on the top you have the information what program is used. If this is not our program, uh, you have the information what program is used and what's more. In the output, you have the information what citations you should use and what program you should cite in the PDB deposit. So basically, phasing is almost done. Yes, that here is solvent flattening. And you are getting a map on the automatic way. And you see that here in the, the red map are anomalous uh, the, the, the anomalous types, and everything else is here. And as you see, the map is quite good. Yes, you have holes in aromatic rings, and these are subdata. The map is uh, continuous. So you see that you have something what you should expect from good processing and good structure solution. So there is a very good indication that you will be able to build the model now. And we will go to model building. And you see, I would like to show you something. That we have this, that it's not something which is, uh, uh, which is, as I said, black box. You have various, uh, you can make various choices, and you can use things which are more, more sophisticated than what I am showing, but again, my time is limited. So I am clicking build and refine on default. Yes, and again, as I told you before, we can play a little. Yes, we can play to get uh, 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 to get better uh, model. And I will wait a few seconds to show you. Okay. To, to show you where are we with model building, that here we have chosen ARP warp for model building. And I am waiting for first uh, build cycle just to show you where are we with the model building in this map. Okay, so we have 
85% in six, six chains and 42% in a longest chain. And after first building cycle, we have four chains docked into 100, uh, I mean, four chains, which is 77%. And as you see here, you see what was, what was already docked and what is more or less the structure. So we could almost finish that, but we automatically going through the few cycles, and R is 0.27, R3 is 0.3. It's not interested to look at that uh, further. What I would like to do, I would like to go to slides again. Oh, wait, wait a second. To switch to slides, yes. Again, this speed, this is done on Mac notebook, and I am running, as you may notice, I am running virtual Windows machine to show the slides. So now, what we could do? We, what we could do more sophisticated? We can test the solvent content. We can play with solvent content, but you see that what we found. Uh, that the optimization of solvent content does not help too much. Uh, what is more difficult is to check how good is your hardware. And here are various problems which we found with hardware and software. Uh, and the pro, you may have problems with the detector, with goniostat, with misaligned goniostat. You may have a problem of cooling if you have very fast decay. And uh, you may have twinning. Yes, and all these problems, they, they are real problems, and they happen, but not as often as, I mean, twinning is not as often as people think because they suspect twinning, but they do not check if you have twinning. But obviously, misalignment of the goniostar or problems with the detector have, have to be fixed. So, for example, what I shown with the distance, the offset in distance, it was fixed immediately after this set was collected. Now, let's say that you have strong anomalous signal and you cannot solve structure. Usually, it's a problem with a space group. And here we have uh, lower class diagrams, and you can check your space group. You can check your uh, systematic absences if you visualize the uh, uh, spots in reciprocal space. And if you use program for a while, you really uh, plus the program. And this is the example of reasonable map and inability to build the model. And this is Midwest Center for Structure Genomics Project, APC 8150521. But somewhere there was mistype and Chang Su was trying to build that into 81501. Usually, people have tendency to switch the program. Chang Su used that program for many structures. And what he did, he sequenced the map. He looked into the target DB. Uh, MCSG target DB, if we have similar uh, target, and he found that the target is 81521. And he immediately switched to 81521, and model was built 
very, very fast. So you see that if you have problems, you may switch to the other program, but the better, and each program has little different uh, uh, range of applications, but you have to realize one thing, that first you have to find why it does not work. This is the example of crystal orientation. I'm sorry, I think that I have, okay. That this is the sun versus Mars. One of my colleagues collected three wavelengths, each 360 frames in electron Pilatus to M. And he couldn't solve structure for various reasons. And we found that we can use 18 Point half percent of collected data. So half of the wavelength to solve structure. I, I'm not going to show that. I, I showed that example in uh, previous uh, webinar. Uh, but you see that here is one of from this paper. It shows how the fraction of structure solved by SAT is growing, and we show here the ESRF versus APS. In APS, you have uh, now around 80% of structure and salt by SAT. At ESRF, it's a little slower, but I do believe that SAT is a way to solve structure in many cases, unless you have low solvent content or some other problems and you need additional good stuff. Now, very fast, I will show the pathway when we are using molecular replacement. And you are looking at the model. You, you, you are searching PDB for a model and you can do various manipulation of the, with the model. You can uh, remove side chains by one click, you can uh, remove water, ligands, uh, you can prepare model very, very fast. And this is the example of uh, ligand fitting for one of the ITP 0044 uh, uh, molecules. One of the question is what model, sometimes you have many models, what model you you should choose. And you are getting, and we are leaving that to the user. And we are giving people the space group, the, the uh, R and R3, uh, the quality of the model, uh, I mean uh, from mole probity, the time where the data were deposited and autos. And people may choose what they should choose when they, they uh, should, uh, should use. The may, sometimes the major problem are ligands. And you see that the, if you will look at PDB, the fraction of ligands with um, the fraction of unknown ligands is higher for high resolution data than for low resolution data. And for many people, this is shocking. But in fact, if you have high resolution model and high resolution map, you cannot put anything. You have to, you have to really think what to put. And here is the exam when magnesium was put instead of calcium. And you see that the distance, the distribution of distances from PDB and Cambridge database is wrong. And we redefined and redeposited the structure. And the ligands are very, very serious problems. And I do not have too much time, so I have to skip and we have ability here to screen, uh, to screen ligands, to go through the uh, database, 
Okay, so the, the what we got here, we got the model build, which was on another screen. And you see that it's quite good build here. It's because when we build, we are using methionine, not seleno methionine, but by one click, we can mutate all methionines into selenomethionine and further refine. Uh, so th this appeared from the model building, which we have, we have seen, and I am killing that and continue with, uh, with uh, slides. And this is, uh, we can go through the ligand libraries, we can choose the, and these are the examples of the ligand libraries, and this is the identification of the uh, ligand. And completeness of model is equally complete, uh, important as completeness of the data, and this is the example when uh, model in the PDB was not completed when a number of waters was put instead of histac. And histac sometimes may be important because it plays a role in dimerization. Sometimes the identification of metals are wrong, and here it's the example when, uh, when you look at the uh, uh, structures, that are better than 1.5 angstrom, you see that in Cambridge database, red, you have different distribution than in, uh, in uh, PDP. And you may think that interaction in PDP are different than the, uh, the interaction in macromolecules are different than interaction in Cambridge database, but in fact, it's enough to re-refine one structure to completely change that. And this is the structure redefined, and you see the drop of R3 is from 21.6% to 14.7. This is high resolution structure. Better Ramachandran, and now after the refinement of one structure, which put 252 sodium atoms, you have the same uh, resolution. Now, we have checked what PDB Redo have done with the structure. And what we found that automatic refinement is sometimes decrease R and R3, but not necessarily fix details like in that case, because we still have 260 two sodium atoms. Another problem is docking libraries, and docking, virtual docking is not as good as it was shown in GPCR doc 2008. And one of the reasons is that the docking libraries, uh, the quality of the structure using the docking libraries are sometimes much worse then the quality of structures, which are obtained nine, and now in structure genomics, and this is the various structure genomic centers and quality of average structures from structure genomics. And this is from Ramachandran, uh, combined Ramachandran uh, plot from docking testing library, and it's clearly you can uh, improve many of the structures, and we took one, and uh, in half an hour, we improved that considerably. I, and so the validation of the structure is very, very important. And I would like to finish that uh, by showing that in Center for Structure Genomics of Infectious Disease, we place the web page which allow you to validate your method or to help to validate your metals. And recently there was long discussion in CCP4 how to validate uh, uh, 
metal sent it prompt us to set up the page like that. Now I would like to acknowledge all people involved, people in my lab, uh, especially Marcin Zimborowski, people in Zbyszek lab, uh, people in uh, 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 sector uh, 19 and MCSG, Zbyszek Dauter, people uh, in Wayne Anderson Center for Structure Genomics of Infectious Disease, and obviously people who are authors of the magnificent programs which we are using, Gary, Paul, Tom, and George, and uh, Victor, uh, and others. I'm sorry, I didn't put Victor here, Victor and Tassos. Uh, on that slide. Uh, thank you.